So we're here with uh, Zixel here at CS 2018, and who are you? My name's Sean Rogers, I'm the product manager for our consumer products. And uh, what are we looking at here? This is called Multi-X. It's a performance-based solution designed for a home mesh network, so if you've got a larger house and you need uh, performance and good coverage throughout your house, this is our solution for So that. Multi? Multi, that's the name. Multi X. X. Yes, the X is important. What does the X mean? Um, we've actually got two solutions. We've got a solution that's designed for the service provider market called Multi Pro. So the X is just to differentiate between that. And so this is the the, the new type of uh, super Wi Fi that's called whole, Mesh. Whole, whole home Wi Fi, yeah, this Mesh is the solution. Mesh, stuff. mesh Wi Fi system. So uh, this $299 for Tri Band. Tri Band AC3000, you get two units. Uh, one unit acts and replaces your router, the other unit you place elsewhere farther away in your house to help extend coverage. And you can choose either one to replace your router? Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you use. Well, you either either one, it'll automatically put itself in router or satellite mode based on how you've got it plugged in. Uh, so basically, uh, there's an input and then outputs, three outputs, or there could be four outputs if you're not doing yeah, it. Yeah, so, so the, main, the main unit, you're gonna have one port that works for your WAN connection. That'll go to your cable modem or your DSL modem. So then you've got three other Ethernet connections for other devices. On the satellite unit, all four are, are available for other things. So for instance, you might place this one near your home entertainment center, so then you've got a cord for your Xbox, a cord for your Fire TV, a cord for your PlayStation 4. Could you also do a power line to the other one? Yes. That improves things? Oh no, so this is designed strictly to be wireless to connect the units together. It's not good if you do power line between them? No, they're, they're designed from the ground that. just for, for ease of use. To make yes. it super simple to set up, everything is done wirelessly to connect the units together. Because. Uh, in my, in my flat, there's uh, old walls, and I can barely get any Wi-Fi from one room to the other. But uh, So yours will go through that somehow? I hope so. I, I hope don't know so. what your walls are made out of. In, in, a, in a typical stick-built type house, you can easily get 2,500 to 3,000 square feet per unit. And so um, uh, what is so special about the mesh? Why is everybody talking about mesh? Why is it uh, so much better than what people were doing before? Um, so before, if you had a hard time um, covering your whole home, what you would have to do is you would buy access points. So to get the wireless connection to the access points, you'd have to run Ethernet cable. And people don't want to run cable through their house. You don't want to hire someone to poke holes in the wall and run stuff up. So then the next solution to that was extenders. You would buy a ex wireless extender. The problem with wireless extenders is they're kind of hard and complex to set up. There's also issues where a lot of people's home phones or their tablets aren't good at roaming. So this solves both of those issues. It makes it super simple to set up, and there's an intelligent roaming that'll force your device to disconnect and reconnect to the closer units. So you've always got the best possible performance no matter where you are in your house. And any Android device from 6.0 or something supports automatically to reconnect to the other one? Um, it, it, it's nothing to do with Android. It'll work no matter what your client device is. So it's the same SSID name for both? Same for both. But that's same with repeaters. With an extender, you get the same name. The problem you get to is your client device would come in, you'd walk in your home, it would connect to the closest device, then you'd walk to the other side of your home, and it would still be connected to that first Why? device. It wouldn't roam properly. Why? Um, it's a limitation on the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi standards basically assumed that a client device would be smart about how it does its roaming. Unfortunately, not every vendor of client devices, not every vendor of cell phones is very good about doing the roaming. So what it should do is uh, so we, the we, further away one should disconnect and force it to reconnect to the closer one? Right, so the standard is that the client controls that. But the client has, not all clients are good at that, and clients have an incomplete picture of the signal connection, the quality of the connection. So we sort of solve that by ignoring the standard and forcing that ability into the router and letting the router or the satellite help decide which one you're actually connecting to. And this is uh, kind of heavy. There's a lot of electronics going on here. And uh, I guess there's algorithms to smartly use the spectrum in your home. And if the neighbors are using some channels, this is going to use the one that's mostly available yes, it, and it, optimize it, things. By default, it automatically takes care of the channel selection so you don't have to. I mean, really, honestly, the setup process is really simple. You launch the app. You tell the app to give permission to your Bluetooth. It will connect to this with Bluetooth. It will handle all of the configuration. The only thing you have to put in is what name you want your network to be and what you want the security password to be. And that's basically all you have to do. You can power line between them, or it's better not to at all? No, it's designed to be wireless backhaul. Designed to, to work on its own, on itself, kind of like uh, connect yeah. the Wi-Fi.
afford it for Right, because the average home consumer, they don't know what power line is, they don't want to run cables. This is designed for that person who just wants something that's easy to use and just works. So how does it compare to the dual band? Some people are doing dual band only mesh. Right. So is tri-band better? So tri-band is better because it gives you three radios. One radio is dedicated for the connection between the, the satellite and the, the router device. So with the, the ones that are only a dual band, they're dual radio, you're using that same radio both to talk to your client device or your laptop, your tablet, your phone, and then you're also using that same one for the bridge. So it cuts your performance in half because anything you send to that satellite has to be sent then again to the router and you can't talk to the end device and the router at the same time so you end up having your coverage because you're having to split your airtime between both the clients and the bridge. And is it smart in like reconfiguring the, itself based on more and more devices you add to your home, where you are in the home, it's just optimizing the sp spectrum. Right, so if you don't have the enough strength. devices you can add additional ones, but it's smart in how it determines the roaming and which device each one is connecting to. It will automatically try to push devices say to the 5 gigahertz radio, which is generally faster. Uh, but it'll still, if it doesn't support 5 gig, it'll automatically drop them down to the 2.4 radio. All right, because here you're doing some power line, yes, we're doing but, power uh, line. but you don't want to combine them. You would, you, you would use them for different solutions. Yeah. So if you're someplace in your home and you want the stability of a wired connection, Powerline is a good alternative to running Ethernet to give you a wired connection. What's the difference between this and that? Has so more stuff going on here? This guy here is, uh, is AV1300 base. This is AV2000 base. So this will get you faster speeds than this does. This one also has the pass-through port, so you don't lose your power line port. You can still plug something into this. So it's 1,000, 2,000 number? 1,300, 2,000. But they're not actually 1,300 megabits. 1,300 is... The industry is like saying, when they say a number, the actual numbers are lower, or...? It, it's real data rate between the two devices in a clean environment. So obviously in a home, you might not get the maximum speed. But like with Wi-Fi, the speeds we're talking about here is how fast you know, this device talks to this device. So there's a whole bunch of protocol overhead that goes into the fact that it's using wires that aren't designed for transmitting data. So there's a bunch of overhead error correction, making sure that the data that's transmitted from this one to this one doesn't get corrupted, nothing gets interfered with, nothing changes. So because of that, the actual speed you see, if you do like a test from your you know, a speed net net test from your computer is going to be less because it's only looking at its data rate. It's not paying attention to the other stuff that's going on between the home plug devices. I'd like to combine those, but you don't, you don't really want that to happen. But yeah. Because uh, then, uh, then I'm more sure that I can put one in one corner and the other corner of the flat and, and still be able to not worry about reconnecting or anything like that. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're better off using like a low-end business solution like our NWA 1123 access points. Those are, those are designed more for business, but that's the type of scenario where you would give but them a backhaul. you have home. to reconnect manually every time? No, it, it still has, uh, it, it does the uh, same sort of things that this does as far as channel selection go. It does have seamless roaming. It's not going to be as good as far as monitoring the roaming, but it'll still be able to use the same SSID throughout your house. All right. And what are you showing over here? Uh, this is a business solution. So this is our um, cloud-enabled or cloud-managed business network solutions. So it allows you to manage your access points, your switches, your security gateway, all through one pane of glass in the cloud, similar to like Meraki, but at a lot more affordable price. Is it the, uh, what's called a gateway networking, something like that? It's cloud networking. So it covers the gateway, covers your switches, covers your access points all through one pane of glass. All right. And is this uh, smoke alarms? Access points. Access points. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, access points. Cool. So Zixel is uh, doing lots of uh, networking Yeah, stuff. so, so Zixel's been around since 1989. So we've been making um, networking equipment since 1989. We started off making analog modems. Back in the day when you would, didn't even have internet, you would dial into a bulletin board system. So from there we moved into AADSL modems. And for the last 15, 20 years, we've been doing consumer networking, business networking, as well as service provider networking. We have some NAS. I'm yes. very excited about those. Yes. So uh, I want to go check it out because there's a dual bay NAS at $79 right now. At the moment at Fry's it's $79 yeah. dual bay NAS, yeah. And uh, how good is it? It's, it's very good for a consumer type product. So, so for a home user it's ideal. It can get over 100 megs throughput from the NAS. So it's more than enough bandwidth to handle multiple 4K streams. Is that a gigabit networking? It has gigabit networking, yes. And I think... I think the 326 also has um, the ability to do uh, 
uh, combine gigabit ports together, so you can combine them into one port. If the 326 doesn't have it, definitely our 520, which is our business NAS, does. But I think the 326 has it as well. What's the 520? 520 is a two-bay two bay? business, more of a business or a higher-end consumer for solution. It's got more memory, so it can run more programs off your NAS. So if you're just doing you know, file shares and stuff, the 326 is great. If you're doing a bunch of applications, such as a BitTorrent downloader, um, you know, some other stuff like that, then the, going up to the 500 series gets you a little bit more horsepower to run those apps. How much is the 500 series? Uh, the 4-Bay is available at Fry's for 239 That's the 500 series? Yes. 4-Bay? 4-Bay. Uh, and that does, that's great for BitTorrent? It, it's, it has a BitTorrent client built in, yes. VPN client? Uh, it does not have a VPN client, no. Uh, uh, VPN server or something like that. Uh, it, it's got its own web server built in, so if you want to host photos or videos for your family, you can do that. All of our NOS, we have an app that makes it super easy to view the content on your NOS, share it with your friends and family, give your friends and family access to your NOS so they can back up their files to the NOS. Um, makes it really easy to find files on your NOS and then cast them to your smart TV. Can you, can you uh, upload from the NOS to cloud services like Amazon Drive or...? Um, I, I know we've got... Uh, Dropbox integration. I think we've got Google Drive integration. I don't yeah. think we do an Amazon. Right? But then people can uh, install what they want. Like it's a Linux. It is Linux kind of. based. So we've got a bunch of apps you can install that are basically plug and play, choose, select, install. Um, but there are any other uh, Linux based thing. If you're familiar with SSH or Telnet, you can go in and install just about any Linux software. So I guess there want. might be some communities of people, of users, doing interesting stuff with it. There is out there. Yes, there yes. is. And all of this stuff is using ARM chips. The NAS, this, yes. everything. This is, for example, a Qualcomm IPQ... Uh, 4019, I think yeah. it was. And that was, a, I think, a Core, Core, Cortex-A7, maybe. Um, it's probably some ARM. Uh, and the NAS. The NAS is ARM-based as well, yes. Even the business one? Also? Yes. I'm pretty, right. I'm pretty sure it is. Cool. All right. So looking forward to more and more uh, nice networking. Thanks a lot for keeping us networked. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it.